So in this lecture, we covered chapter 10.8, mass moment of inertia. It's a lot like the moment of inertia of an area. So what is the equation? Well, they look like this. Instead of the area moment of inertia, which would be the integral of, let's say, uh, y squared dA uh, about the x-axis, this would be the analog here. It, you have the integral of y squared dm. So what's dm? It's a little chunk of mass, where here you are doing an area summation or area integration. Here you're doing a mass. Now, a lot of times that little chunk of mass is equal to some rho dv, so volume, or a rho times a thickness dA. The thickness times the dA gives me a d volume, little volume. All right. Um, now, um, we're going to solve some problems where they're about a point, so you're interested in calculating the mass moment of inertia about a point, and then it's going to be the distance r squared from that point. Sometimes that point will be g, the center of mass of that uh, system or that object. Uh, sometimes it'll be point o, which is located away from the center of mass of my object. So if you um, uh, have it where you need to calculate it, let's say a point O, if you calculate it first at the center of mass, that's that I bar, then you use the parallel axis theorem. So it's that distance squared between the two points, or in, in 2D, we're not going to do 3D, uh, then it'd be the distance squared uh, in the in 2D times that mass. So you have the parallel axis theorem for the mass moment of inertia, just like you had it for the uh, moments of inertia for areas. We can do it for composite bodies, and we can do it for uniform bodies. What are the typical SI units for mass moment of inertia? So what was the equation again? It was the summation or the integration of some distance squared, you could put uh, r squared dm. So what was this mass, distance? So this would be like uh, meter squared, length squared, and the mass would be kilogram. So which are the units? Yeah, so it's a C. The mass moment of inertia of a body can be negative, true or false? Well, here's the equation for it, false. And so it makes no sense. We never have a negative mass, okay? We're talking a, a real object, not how you would do, to compute it for an object where you have holes in it, you know, where you're adding and subtracting. But if you have a real object, it has real mass. There's no objects with negative mass. And this distance is squared, so it's always positive. Well, why do we cover this moment of inertia? Well, the next class, hopefully next semester, you're in dynamics. So in chapter 17, uh, there's a title of a chapter, Planar Kinetics of a Rigid Body, Force, and Acceleration. Sometimes the titles are a little hard to get to, but the point is, is in there they have the equations of motion. You know the equations of motion for rectilinear motion, right? What are the equations of motion for this whole class is the sum of the forces equal to zero. The next class, dynamics, the sum of the forces equal to ma. Ma. Things start accelerating when there's an imbalance of forces. And so you break this down. Let's just focus on 2D. They're talking planar. So a lot of times, before you get to 3D, let's just see if we can do 1D and then 2D dynamics, right? And so they're going to have the sum of the forces in the x have the mass times the acceleration in the x. And then likewise, the sum of the forces in the y equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y. But there's one other thing that an object can do, not just rectilinear motion, let's say translate in x or translate in y. What can the object, the two-dimensional planar object do? Rotate. It can rotate, can't it? 
Now, if you had trouble with this equation, recalling from your physics class, the uh, cousin equation for rotation, and this, because it's 2D, it's planar, there's only one axis for rotation. When you get to 3D, there's three axes for translation and three axes for rotation, and you can really get lost in the math, but hey, let's not get too psyched out. Let's just think about it. You get rotation in 2D, only you know one, one axis or one it's like out the Z, around the Z direction. And so what would be that equation? Well, that equation would be something like, not the sum of the forces, the sum of the things that make it want to rotate. What did we learn in statics that make it want to rotate? Clockwise or clock? Exactly, the sum of the moments. Okay. Now, we, before we had the sum of the moments equal to zero for our equilibrium. But now our equations of motion it's going to have something like mass and then something like acceleration. So I don't know if you learned um, dynamics. You learned X, V, A, position, velocity, acceleration. Okay. And so in rotational systems, what is the, uh, the similar term for the displacement in a rotational system? Theta. What would be theta? Theta would be the angle. Angular degree of rotation. All right. All right. And then what would be the analogous term for velocity? If you're doing angular velocity, what would that be? That's often used omega. And then the rate of change of omega with respect to time, that's the second time derivative of theta. That gives alpha. Yeah, alpha. And so alpha is our uh, angular acceleration, where A was our linear acceleration, right? But uh, this term right here, well, that's why we're covering it right now. It's a moment of inertia. It's an inertia. You have a large system, you have large mass. It's going to take large forces to make it accelerate in X or Y. Likewise, if you have a large moment of inertia, that's just like a sluggishness, it'll take large moments to get it to accelerate with the angular uh, acceleration. So this is a term right there. So the symbol is I, and the easiest is you're going to put the equations and you're going to do the acceleration of this two-dimensional body, and you're going to attract acceleration of G. What does G mean? That's that center of mass of my body, my planar object, my planar object. And then this is likewise the, the acceleration of the, in the y direction. And so this is the mass moment of inertia about the center of gravity for that object. Now, a lot of times things don't always rotate around the center of gravity. They rotate around a different point, shift it away, parallel axis theorem. And you, you have another a body that's pinned at point O, and then you have the sum of the moments about that point O acting on the body. And then you have the angular acceleration about point O, and then you need the mass moment of inertia about point O. So these, this is the motivation for understanding or being able to do this calculation. Well, with that, let's jump into a problem. <clears throat>